Yeah, I mean, I, I like the visor idea. Keep it and then go, because that's what's cool about the Insomniac series. Is like, like she said, it's like every race. If it's you like, do this all the time. Yeah, like you get, it's yeah, not just like that. another texture. You know, but, this. So like, here's the problem to me. Sinister, I feel like you get really cool things. You get arm sleeves and you get a visor that almost everyone's going to use. Adrenaline, you get a shirt. People are going to use the shirt. Head wrap is cool. Head wrap and sunglasses maybe seems a little cheap if you were to put that right next to the Sinister goodies. Mm -hmm. I know we've already said visor and arm sleeves for Sinister on the website, so it stays that way for now, but I think we need to start coming up with better options. I'm just trying to think of like if we were to go like blackout, ironically, as a full moon this year. <laughs> so I know. I don't know if there's like something we could tie in with that as far as your other goodie. I don't know what it would be, but... So what was the other thing? Sunglasses last year? Was mm -hmm. But like, I like Jamil's sunglasses that he wears that say dope on him. <laughs> you mean these sunglasses? I, I mean those sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? Yeah, you, can't, like, you can see through them to too. See? Oh, you can see pretty good. You say like, they're for, Jubilee wears them all the time and they're really fun. We just need to do a better job of actually. <laughs> what do you think? So what, actually, they're, they're not like, as terrible as they. It all lights up. Like you, the, it, you can see through them. It's like, just like sitting behind a chain link fence. <laughs> okay. Okay. So something else for blackout. So I don't know if we want to do something like just, because I love that design. And here's the thing, not a lot of people have run that race yet. Right, so it's a newer it's, race. Yeah, it's a newer race. We've, we, you only have, you're just like less than a hundred people both years. So if you keep the same design and maybe update the color, it could be kind of fun as a yellow with the black background. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful hat. We've got oh, that little thing so in the glasses. Great gold attention to detail. Safe to say we're not going with these hats again, so don't worry. But so I think a hat for hypnosis isn't a bad thing. I just want it to not look like these two. Because <laughs> I showed it to my buddy, he's like, you can get the bottle over built into the back, so and it's a magnet, so you don't see it at all. Mm -hmm. So it just shows like the true metal. And then you can still put it on your fridge or whatever you want. Like I also think that the bottle opener or... for a lot of people that like metals, because I having this conversation with you yeah. totally randomly, I was sitting at a big table with all of the Wazell girls who are kind of an interesting subset because they're mostly road racers that are very metal oriented, and they were going off about how much they hated having the bottle opener. Bottle opener, yeah. like that's totally worthless. Like, why would I actually <laughs> ever use it as a bottle opener? It it's almost like having a bottle bonus. opener on your shoe, like on yeah. your flip flop. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Although that is pretty useful sometimes, I bet. So I would prefer to get the shirts ordered now. Yeah. And because Excel screen printing did them last year, they know the design they did it last year. That's you can just order thing. from them. Yeah. Oh, that's the local company. That's the local company. Okay. Is that the company right next door? Or is that no, a company? No, no. Okay. This is the company in Tempe. Okay. Yeah, we just wrapped up with a meeting here at Aravipa with, uh, that was Haley, and she's president. We had Noah, who is our race director of our Insomniac and Dirt Series events, and also Sophia, who is our new graphic designer. We are going through a lot of our branding concepts and goodies for the upcoming Insomniac Night uh, Trail Run Series, which is kicking off at the end of April. So yeah, about five weeks from now, with our adrenaline night runs. So we'll have a total of eight nighttime trail runs here that are happening in Arizona. Most of them are in the Phoenix area. We also have one in Flagstaff. They run all the way through October. So a lot of them are in the heat of the summer, but we also have a couple into the fall and kind of coming up with some cool ideas and concepts, trying to dial in all of our race goodies for this year. Good stuff. Just want to take a quick second. I've been reading through some of the uh, emails you guys have been sending. Thank you very much. I appreciate it so much. Uh, it's really cool to hear a little bit about your stories and where you're coming at as runners and what this uh, channel provides for you. It's really meaningful. So I just thank you all for that. Wrapping up things here soon at the office, but these are kind of cool. We got these new posters made up for a couple of our April and May runs. This one is for Whiskey Basin, which is coming up the weekend after Barkley. And what I just told someone recently is, I'd say our best, least known race, that it's like an up and comer uh, for us. I think it's only in its second year this year, but within a couple years, I think it'll be a national class style race, kind of like Black Canyon is. It is on the Prescott Circle Trail, which 
circumnavigates the town of Prescott, Arizona, which is already really well known for its mountain biking and they have the Whiskey Route Marathon. Something really cool, which I'm going to get into a lot more and follow this year's journey, is the Whiskey Man, which is something that we created last year. Uh, Michael Versteeg, who I think some of you know from the Arizona Trail videos, he was the first ever Whiskey Man, and that consists of the 88K Trail Run, which is the full circle of circumnavigation of Prescott. You do that run, then you do the Epic Rides 50 mile mountain bike race, and then you do the Whiskey Row Marathon, all within about four to five weeks time, depending on the year. Something I hope to do next year personally, and I'm really stoked to have something like this challenge in existence and that we are helping to create some sort of a legacy for. Another one that we're bringing back this year, it's called the Hotfoot Hamster. This was my first ultra that I ever ran back in 2005. It's going to be held at Nardini Manor, which is a piece of property that my friend owns out near Buckeye, Arizona, and he personally built a 500 meter track on the course. So you're looping around a ton of times like a hamster and uh, it's a good time. I've also got these cool, cool awards this year for Whiskey Basin, check these out. So this is the 88K, 57K, 31K and 10K. So if you guys are fast, you could win those. Okay, we also were getting some questions and some comments from people about Haley because she's the one that was on the West Highland Way, if you saw those episodes right around UTMB. And she has another trip coming up that she just planned, so we want to talk to her for a bit about that. What's up, Haley? Hi, I still exist. I just have been uh, doing other things besides running very much, but I just got myself into uh, about a thousand mile bike ride, which I don't bike. Um, with my dad and we're going to be doing joggle so uh, it goes from John O'Groats to Land's End it's basically or some people call it an end-to-end -end, I think and starts on the northeast corner of Scotland and you finish in the southwest corner of England so it's gonna be fun and what's your plan are you gonna share that with people yes of course so uh, instead of it necessarily being a steep life I think we're going to call it Jaylee Does Joggle because that's my new name, sorry. So Jaylee Does Joggle. <laughs> Jaylee because everybody here, a vast majority, are all J names and I got left out with an H. Because Jamil, Jubilee, Jill, Josh, who am I missing? Jess. Jess. Everyone. And Javelina or Havelina. I know, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so Jaylee Does Joggle. So I'll be taking you guys along for the ride. It'll be kind of fun. I mean, really, it's going to be interesting because I have not been on a bike. I mean, elementary school might be accurate, but I think I did do maybe a 10 mile bike ride around Martha's Vineyard a few years ago. Beyond that, I've, I'm definitely not a cyclist. I'm learning this is expensive. If there's anybody out there that wants to sponsor Jaylee Does Joggle with lots of cycling gear, please let me know. Oh, you should check out, there's this thing called Steve Bay. Apparently I learned about this. It's like on a Facebook group for cyclists. Right it's like now? eBay, but Steve Bay. I was gonna ask you something else. Oh, did you say when the trip is? Oh, no, I mean, there's so much to tell about it. Where I leave June 16th and return to the States July 11th. I guess I should explain too. I'm going with my dad. My dad is 61 and it's been a five year plus goal for him to do this. Hence why I said yes to getting on a bike, is doing this with him. He wanted to do it with his brother, but his brother passed away right when I started working for Aeroviper about two and a bit years ago. Um, so he couldn't do it with him. And so he asked my sister and I, but my sister just got her first big girl job, so she can't take off that much time. She'll be doing the first portion with us. And he was going to do it alone, and I just couldn't let that happen. So I'm going with him, and we're going at his speed which means we'll be taking some breaks and staying with family, um, doing anywhere between 50 to, I think like our biggest day might be 85 miles uh, per day with a couple of breaks in there. And then I love that my dad put on the schedule a rest day for July 1st, but that rest day will be in Ambleside in the Lake District. My sister and I, my sister will still be with us and we're gonna run a 55K race put on by Lakeland Trails. In, in Ambleside, so I'll get to do some fell running and I'm really excited about that. What is it called? Lakeland. Lakeland 55K. All right, any, any of you out there 
that have run or are gonna be at the Lakeland 55K, keep an eye out for Jaylee. She's gonna be there. Your sister's gonna run it too? Yeah, so she's run that before. She oh, okay. ran it a few years ago and she ran it with a massive like camping, hiking backpack to fit all of the required kit in it because she didn't know that she could buy much smaller versions of everything. So it was kind of humorous. I definitely always wanted to run it with her. There's some really cool photographs of that area. Plus I, that's what, I mean, the Lake District is what got me into ultra running because when I was there at the end of my senior year in college, uh, I went with my uncle. He was a huge Wainwright fan who wrote and like peak bagged every peak in the Lake District. And so he took me on a couple of, of hikes. I just really fell in love with the area and then he bought me a book called Feet in the Clouds and I read it on the train back from the Lake District to London and it was all about fell running, ultra running, it was my first introduction to ever hearing about western states um, or anybody that ran these crazy distances so it's kind of where I fell in love with ultra running and it's really cool to get to go back there and do an ultra for the first time. Well, first time there. I think that's it. I mean I I really think the hardest part for me is going to be getting on the bike for the first time. I just ordered clipless shoes. I mean, I really have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Any advice? Anyone that's done it, I would love to hear from you. Or any just first time cycling advice, I would also love to hear from you. Are you going to share any of your training or are you just going to start the film when you get there? That's a good question. I probably should film the first time I attempt to get on the bike. I should probably film the first time I try to clip into the bike. I was just watch. I just saw on Facebook. I don't know why. I fall all the time trail running. I have bruised and bloody knees. I have permanent scarring on my left leg from falling on the trails. And yet I am way more scared than I should be of falling for the first time while clipped into the bike, which I know everyone says is a rite of passage, but I'm very afraid of it. So we probably should film that. And I don't like being in traffic on the bike. There's so many things. I don't want to be in traffic. I don't want there to be a car passing me. I don't want to be clipped in and fall over. Lots of things that I just <laughs> don't want to have happen, hence why I run on the trails with no traffic. But I think we are taking a longer route because I think you can do, I think you can do it in 800 some odd miles, but we're taking the more scenic route, no major, roadways um, and adding on miles, which I am more than okay with. And I know we're taking a few detours to see some really cool things. Like right away, the first day when we leave John O'Groats, we've got a couple of detours. But yeah, I'll definitely, I'll film my training. And by training, I'm just really just actually even getting back to running period. I've had to take a few months off. So training for everything, training for basic fitness, training to learn how to ride a bike. Start filming that soon. Last thing before I head out, I got another piece of gear in the mail. This is one I purchased. This is, it's actually a North Face jacket. Um, I love the Solomon stuff, but this is just from experience. I carried the first generation version of this jacket, it, both of my previous Barclays, and this thing was gold. It's fairly inexpensive. I think I picked this one up for $85 but it is waterproof. Uh, it just really keeps the rain out. And I mean, I was out there in 20 hours of rain the first time I went to Barkley. So, um, and I lost my other jacket. I think I lent it to uh, my buddy Versteeg and never got it back. So got myself, this is kind of like an emergency. Um, I won't carry this unless they're predicting heavy rains. Otherwise I'll just carry the uh, sh the waterproof shell I got from Solomon. It's a lot lighter weight and packable. This thing is, you know, a lot more dense. So hopefully if, if I am carrying it on a loop, I'm actually wearing it the whole time and it's not actually gonna be in my pack. So uh, this is the Venture 2 jacket and uh, definitely gotta be prepared. That is one of the elements for Barkley's success. Well, signing off for tonight, still not back running. Hopefully see some more improvement tomorrow and I can get back out with our group run. Have a great night, guys.